This program is proudly sponsored by the Pacific International Hospital. So it's a muscle. Your heart is basically a muscle, just like your muscles in the arm or your legs. But this muscle also has an electrical wiring or a system, if you please, which makes it into an electromechanical pump. Thousands of people going about their daily lives, but also thousands of beating hearts, an organ which too often we take for granted. So your normal heart beats an average about 70 times a minute. Calculate that, you're talking about 2 billion beats per year. Yes, we talk about our hearts when it comes to feeling of passion and joy. But how many of us truly understand the way it works from a physiological point of view? Why does your heart beat faster at times? When you're in love, when you see something beautiful or you get excited about something, when you're exercising. So these are all scenarios where your heart changes its rhythm. So why is that? Why is that? In medical school, we were taught to learn to listen to the heartbeat and it was loop doop, loop doop. In this episode of The Mysteries of the Human Body, we will take a closer look at the engine of our life and understand in the process how complex this unique organism is, but also how incredibly fragile. I was heading to work with my daughter. I was about to go and drop my daughter off at school. And I felt this sharp pain and heaviness on my chest. So I managed to go drop her off. As I was heading to work, the pain was gradually increasing. So I parked outside the office. So I was just controlling myself. I went into our restroom, then I started vomiting. I felt that, am I going to die? Or is it going to come again? Or, you know, this, there were many questions coming in my mind. The heart is also a muscle and like other muscles in the body require oxygen and the blood vessels bring that oxygen. And when these arteries are thickened because of high cholesterol, then the blood supply is limited. The poor heart is trying to pump, but not getting enough blood, it goes into ischemia. And that ischemia causes the pain. When I walked into the emergency room, doctors and nurses were asking what's wrong. And then um, I was just signing to them, pointing to my chest and saying, pain because I couldn't talk. When a person comes in, if we are suspecting that this is a cardiac event, a heart attack, first thing is to give them oxygen. 
basically try to reduce the work that the heart has to do because it's got a failing pump. Of course, we do an ECG, which is an electrocardiogram, but with the availability of a cardiac catheterization laboratory, which allows the doctor to see where the blockages are that can be relieved by putting a wire and a balloon to expand that narrowed area. They put a little spring-like device called a stent, so that will keep that area open. Here is, it's thick and here it becomes very thin. Not enough for the heart muscle to work properly. Now the patient will feel less power, heart pain, heart pressure or burning and he will be short in breath because this is a very important vessel. There's, these are the main symptoms he will have. I cannot tell how many minutes was it, but whilst the end of the procedure I was awake. I could see what was going on. Yeah. And then they started asking me, is the pain there? And then I said, no, it's gone. Amazing. Very amazing. We are fortunate that for the last five years, we now have a cath lab uh, at PIH. We've done over 500 uh, cases where the person who was having acute attack was taken to the lab blockage was identified and was stented, blood restored, and the damage to the heart was prevented. I feel normal again, back to normal again. Yeah. So it's good that, you know, this sort of program enhance to people, advise them, give awareness that oh, this thing is actually real. And, and it doesn't matter how old are you, it doesn't matter if a strong person or not a strong person, it will still hit you if you don't eat the right food because it's all about what we eat, is who we are. Yes, we are what we eat after all because a sedentary lifestyle has changed dramatically not only the way we live but also the way we feed ourselves. But how many of us are conscious of our nutrition on a daily basis? And how many of us have done a full medical checkup in recent years? With these questions in mind, the makers of this program have decided to be proactive, because prevention is always better than cure. We all think about hospitals as a place to go when you're sick, but nowadays, Hospitals are also changing and the relationship with that patient is changing. It comes an age that uh, you need to start to consider yourself uh, at risk of anything. And I think the heart is a good place to start. So, finger crossed, we'll be there shortly. We'll be talking to a number of doctors there and we'll see what the situation is. Come in, hello. You are welcome. You nice to see you. Okay. So you're not having any problems right now. No. You're not short in breath. You do have no chest pain and you feel completely healthy. Yeah. But you want, just want to check if there's any uprising disease maybe. Exactly. Okay, we start with a, with a lab test. A lab test will show the blood sugar. The other thing is we will do uh, in the lab test, we can see the kidneys, the kidney function. We can see the lipid levels, so the fat levels, which are very important also for the arteries. The other thing we, we can do today is an ECG, which shows the electricity of the heart. How many heartbeats you have? Is it normal flowing or is there some block or is there some delay or something like that? And we can do an echocardiogram. This is a test which shows the work of the heart muscle. Somebody will take you to the lab to do the blood test and then, and then you will be transferred to a nurse will, which, which will do the ECG and do a measure of the blood pressure. Okay.
Yes, ready uh, to go. No, but I don't break now. Thank you. All right. Give me the one. Oh, okay, good. I think you're ready. Okay. Yeah. All right, starting now. Easy. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. 140, 90. 40, 90. Yes. You all right to go to the next stage? Yeah. We're proceeding now. Can I run as well? Yeah, you can jog, run, or... Uh... So an average person, you know, would have 70 times a minute. The more athletic you are, your heart doesn't need to pump too often. How are you? Still good? Yeah. We'll go to the next stage, right? Okay. Okay. If it's a fit heart, We're almost there, target heart right. the one pump generates stage, right? a whole lot more blood okay. than a weaker heart. We're slowing down. All right. Okay. Chest pain, shoulder pain. Yeah. Dizziness, I think. Whenever you're ready, you can take your seat. Mm -hmm. You achieved uh, the seventh stage, the last stage of the exercise protocol. So, in summary, your heart's uh, condition is still all right. I mean, uh, as far as this test is concerned, mm -hmm. your heartbeat has been stable all throughout the, the exercise, even at the peak of exercise. But the only thing is that we know is that your blood pressure is going up as you progressed with your exercise. So that's one thing that you need to, to take a look at. Because uh, it tells you that you are at risk of developing full-blown hypertension anytime mm -hmm. soon. It's great. Right. Oh, yeah. You know, the blood pressure, is that we have the systolic and the diastolic pressure, correct? Okay, systolic pressure is the one that's accelerating and it's going up when you exercise. Right. While your diastolic pressure should be just remain the within within the normal range. Okay. Well, this is pretty much the end of this uh, this short journey that we took a couple of days ago. Not as a patient, but as somebody that really wants to think about prevention uh, more than the disease itself and prevention as a cure. And I think we learned a lot of things. Uh, my heart seems to be in a good condition, but at the end of the day, Dr. Galicio told me, check your pressure because under stress, your pressure was a little bit high. And that's something that I never thought about it. The heart is an incredible organ and uh, it's very strong, stronger than we ever thought. But we also learned that it can be extremely fragile. So each and every one of us should take care of our heart more than anything else that we ever did before. Coming up after the break. Your three arteries block, my valve need repair, and my enlarged iota. I still struggle to contain that voice. You are dying, you are dying, dying. Seven years ago, 2014, July, it was the one Sunday. I left my house, I walked down to the office, my office is down. On my way back, I began to encounter this uh, shortness of breath and uh, discomfort on my chest. It's heaviness. I thought there's something wrong with me. Ruben uh, was a professional. Uh, he's a chaplain with the police uh, department and his heart was in failure. His blood was developing what we call backflow and also there was congestion developing in his lungs. 
with him, I mean, forget walking. If he laid down straight on a bed, he could not breathe. The first doctor I saw told me that something wrong with your digestive system. No one disclosed to me that there's something wrong with your heart. I've been taking, say, around seven different types of medication per day. So on that same week, PIH advertised a um, discount on the um, angiogram. Third anniversary today, the cardiac unit has reduced all angiogram prices by 50%. By 50%. The doctor who conducted the test, his name is Dr. Vinet from India. He checked me and he told me after the, getting my results that you have three arteries who block and my valve need repair and my uh, enlarged iota. Now I, I understood the problem. When our visiting uh, surgical team uh, arrived, on their first visit, they didn't want to touch him because it was a very high risk case. They wanted to get familiar with their own surrounding, their operating situation in PNG. So on their second or third trip, they, uh, they knew he has no other option. And he realized that his chance of surviving the surgery uh, was 50-50 and that he might not come out of that operating room alive. When you, you, you get this type of uh, stories, Mr. Death is all, always appeared in, my, in anybody's mind. Now, this is the end of your life. I just really struggled to contain that voice. You are dying, you are dying, dying. So to have a man who has a leaky valve and to have blocks in three arteries and also have a bad heart was a unique problem to be resolved. So he came with the team and he interviewed me, myself and my wife and my eldest son. And he, this is what Dr. Anil told them. Please, if the operation doesn't go the way that you expect, please forgive me. When he was heading into operation, I think a day or two before, I picked up Zara from school and we went to just see him before he went in. This is another photo I keep just to, yeah, I remember the time. In the, in the back of your head, you think, is this the last time we're taking the photo, kind of thing? I told them, yeah, there's only a 50% chance that we can pull it off, and the family just told me that you do whatever you can do, do your best, and we will not blame you for anything that happens. You just do your job. So we went ahead and did our job, that's all. I only know when I, the first shocked me, the machine. I felt that shock and then it stopped. And then the second one woke me up. <laughs> and I began to breathe, I began to look around and see, oh, I'm in the hospital. 
when he opened his eyes, he felt, no, oh, I am alive. That was it. After that, everything was good. He was breathing nicely. He started singing songs in the ICU, you know, prayers in the ICU. Believe it or not, you know, he was so positive there. I am feeling much better. My life is back to normal. Every time when I go for my review, Dr. Galicia would ask me, Ben, how are you, Ben? Morning. How are you feeling? Morning. You feeling any uh, shortness of breath or any? Uh, I always tell him, nothing. I'm normal. Nothing unusual? Nothing. Okay. Daily activities still the same. And I thank God for PIH. You know, people are saying that it's competing with all the public hospitals and other private hospitals. But I think they're trying to raise the standard to have experienced doctors and use modern equipment. Coming up after the break. Of all the congenital defects that babies are born with, heart defects are the most common. There can be holes between the chambers and then there can be problems with the valves. So that's the main issues that we're looking at with children who are born with these holes. While in adults, most of the time are the lifestyle diseases related uh, problems. Uh, in children, majority of what comes under pediatric heart disease is congenital heart defects. And of all the congenital defects that babies are born with, heart defects are the most common. When the baby is in the womb, the lungs are not mature and there is a little uh, channel that is used to bypass the lungs. The minute the baby is, is born, this hole in the heart uh, closes off. In children where this passage fails to close, it is called a patent, meaning open, ductus, meaning a duct or a tube, arteriosis, meaning the artery. So it's, for short, it's called PDA. So children, babies who have a PDA is the hole in the heart. Six young Papua New Guineans aged between 3 and 20 were identified with heart diseases in Jiwaka and were referred to the Pacific International Hospital from Kujip Hospital to undergo free but highly specialized cardiac surgery. The Four Hearts and Souls Foundation, partnering with the Pacific International Hospital, Dr. Kirk Millowen, a pediatric cardiologist and founder of Hearts and Souls, together with his wife, Dr. Kimberly Millowen, identified the patients and has started on treating them with their team this week. Week. The human heart has four chambers and four valves. And so there can be holes between the chambers and then there can be problems with the valves. So that's the main, the main issues that we're looking at with children who are born with these holes. If, if the mother at the time of conception isn't in good dietary health, isn't in, it, it doesn't have her, let, let's say her sugars aren't in control, her other aspects of her health aren't good, can really affect the, the development of the baby's heart. The other uh, heart diseases that we see in children are infectious. And especially when we talk about PNG, rheumatic heart disease is quite common. So, you know, you've heard people say uh, a sore throat, which is bacterial cause, if that infection gets worse, then through the blood, the bacteria kind of goes and sets itself into the heart valve. And that leads to then scarring of the valves and causes valvular heart disease. In 
And so these are children who I've been seeing for many years since 2010, but uh, I, I didn't have an opportunity to, to get them treated. And I was very frustrated that I saw these children who were basically forgotten by the world um, because there was no road and there was not an easy way to get them down to Moresby. Um, so I'm, I'm also very thankful to the leadership at this hospital that they've allowed me to bring these very poor children uh, down to uh, be treated for no cost. You know, it's one thing that you live and there is one thing called that you exist, right? So a child who has difficulty breathing, who cannot do normal activities, is robbed of their childhood, you know? What is interesting is that with Dr. Kirk and for Hearts and Souls Foundation, uh, PIH has been able to do what was traditionally done as open heart surgery, which is much more taxing for a little child, can now be done in the cath lab through minimal invasive procedure. And the child can go home the next day and is up and about. Then now we can play and run normally. And it's well, it's not experiencing any other uh, science that we have exhausted before, and thank you, Dr. Sister, and thank you, Heart and Soul Foundation. To me, as a, as a doctor who goes out to the bush to find kids, to be able to take that love or finding the kids who maybe have never been on a <laughs> never been on an airplane, never been in a, in, a, in a big city, and to be able to take them to a place and treat them with with world class care, at a, like at a hospital of PIH, is is a godsend for me. So you know, a lot of people kind of say, "Oh, this runs in my family," you know, high blood pressure and heart disease. So I'm also going to get it, and. What you need to realize is that there is something called nature versus nurture as well. I'll give you an example, you know, my paternal grandfather, he was a known high blood pressure patient and uh, he didn't take heed, you know, of his blood pressure and what it can do. And he had a sudden massive heart attack, which he never recovered from and within one week he passed away and he was only 50. On the other hand, 10 years later, my grandmother, she was also a known hypertensive. And when the doctor told her, you've got to stop your salt, she lived to be 80. Her diet control, her uh, exercise, she walked regularly. So growing up, we've been quite aware and I find that that awareness is not present here in PNG. This program was brought to you by the Pacific International Hospital.